Here's another example of how to use angular momentum. So we have a spinning disk, it's spinning looks like clockwise, therefore it has a negative angular velocity of minus one radians per second. Um, we've already calculated the moment of inertia of the disk to be 300 kilograms meter square. It has a radius of 1.5 meters. Now, a child with a mass of 30 kilograms runs and jumps onto the disk. The child's velocity 5 meters per second in negative direction. So after the child runs and jumps on the disc with that velocity, what will now be the new angular velocity of the disc with the child on top of the disc? All right, the way we work that is we say that moment, the angular momentum initially equals the angular momentum at the very end. So initially we have uh, L initial of the disc plus L initial of the child equals L final of the disc plus the child together. Okay, the reason why I wrote it out like this is because you may have a little bit of trouble understanding how do we get the angle momentum of the child if the child is running in a linear motion. Well, the way we can look at it is the child is running and the moment the child runs and jumps on the disc, at that moment, the child on the disc it has angle momentum because it, ha it is at a distance r away from the center of motion. It has a mass of 30 kilograms. It has a linear velocity along the edge of the disk of 5 meters per second, which we can convert to angular velocity. Because the relationship here is that the tangential velocity is equal to r times omega, or omega, which is the angular velocity, is equal to the tangential velocity divided by the radius. So if we take the tangential velocity of the child, which is 5 meters per second, and we divide that by the radius, which is, in this case, 1.5 meters, we'll end up with, let's see, that looks like 3.33 per second, and of course that would be radians per second. So the child's angle of velocity equivalent of its linear motion, once it hits a disk and it, the disk is going around in circles, would be 3.33 radians per second. Also, we can find the equivalent moment of inertia of the child, which is equal to mr squared, because once the child jumps on the disk, it is at a distance r away from the center of rotation, and all of the mass of the child is at the very edge of the disk. So the moment of inertia of a point mass at distance r away from the center of rotation always is mr squared. So even though the child is running in a straight line, the moment the child jumps on the disk, you can then calculate that equivalent uh, angular momentum of the child by calculating the moment of inertia and by calculating the actual angular velocity or the equivalent angle velocity of its tangential velocity. So now we can plug those numbers in here. So the moment of inertia or the angle momentum of the disk is the moment of inertia of the disk times omega of the disk initial plus the moment of inertia of the child times the equivalent angle velocity of the child and of course that would be initial equals, now they're going to be together. The disc and the child now will be one because the child will grab onto the disc and rotate with the disc. So now we can say that we can combine I of the disc plus I of the child and then we can multiply that times the combined angular velocity of both the child and disc afterwards. So then if we want to solve for omega final, we can say omega final is equal to the left side of the equation which is I of the disc times omega, that is the initial angular velocity of the disc, plus I of the child, times the original or the initial uh, angular velocity of the child, all divided by this part of the equation on the right side, which then goes to the denominator, becomes I of the disc plus I of the child. And that should give us the new angular velocity of the disc with the child now on it. All right, let's plug in some numbers. I of the disc. We already gave that to be 300 kilograms meters squared times omega initial of the disk. Now omega of the disk is a minus one radians per second because it's clockwise, that's considered negative. So minus one radians per second plus I of the child and the child has a, a mass of 30 kilograms and a radius of 1.5 meters from the center of the disk. So it would be 30 kilograms times 1.5 meters 
and of course we have to square that, so that would be the moment of inertia of the child, times the original or the initial omega of the child, the equivalent omega, calculated from its tangential velocity. Now the child will be moving in a counterclockwise direction as the child runs on to the this that makes it a positive angular velocity of 33.33 uh, radians per second. Okay, and we divide the whole thing then by the combined eye of the disc and the eye of the child. So the eye of the disc would be 300 kilograms meter squared plus the eye of the child, which is 30 kilograms times 1.5 meters squared. And that should give us the new angle of velocity of the two combined. Again, due to the fact that angle of momentum is conserved. It's Calculate the numerator here, so we have 1.5 squared times 30 times 3.3333 equals, so we got 225. So let me put some numbers down. So this here would be plus 225. Over here we have minus 300 plus, and then in the denom denominator we have 1.5 squared times 30. And we add that to 300. So it would be 367.5. So, altogether, we have minus 300 plus 225 divided by 367.5 equals, and that would be a minus 0 0.20 radians per second. So that would be the final angle of velocity of both the disk and the child. So here's a nice little example where we don't have two rotating, ob rotating objects, we have one rota rotating object, another object jumping onto the rotating object, but once it jumps on, you can find the equivalent angular momentum of that particular object, in this case a child jumping onto the maybe a little merry-go-around, and it allows you also to use the conservation of angular momentum to find the final angular velocity. And that's how we do that.